Enshrouded is an open world survival game where you build, craft, and fight monsters. We explore this expansive world armed with our sword, discovering new places, equipment, enemies, and allies. Join me on my 100 day journey in Enshrouded as I play as a warrior. So let's begin. So we awoken from our slumber inside a metallic giant jar and so we explore the area and then we head outside what's this wow why is it in flames so we communed with the flame and it told us we've slept too long and we are a flameborn this was the realm of embervale and it has fallen it is now consumed by the shroud and now i'm being called by the flames I have a mission to save Embervale and plant a lot of flame altars. So a vast world awaits me, filled with secrets and peril. Press I and navigate the map. Okay, so we'll place our first base there. Alright, since there was no way down from there, we explore this mine just on the left side of where we spawned. And here we have a torch. And with its torch, it lighted up our way. <laughs> so we grab some bombs on the sh shelves here. And then we'll throw it on this barricade, which I can't see because of the text. Oh yeah, we got the barricade out. And now we open this chest, which contains a level 1 hatchet. This is our very first weapon. Alright, so let's head down. There was another thing blocking here. So let's open this. It was another chest. Inside was another torch and a bandage. This game likes to give you torches. I don't know why. So anyways, in this game, there's something called the Shrouded. This is the Shroud Mist. And in here, you have a timer on top of our player. And if it, got, it goes to zero, we're dead in the Shrouded. We became something like this. You know, this guy here. Ouch. Oh my god. I couldn't block that. I wanted to time my block, but I couldn't. Oh, we got a sword. Anyways. Yeah. So we've defeated the shroud. The shrouded people. And now we continue outside. So this is our first ever battle with a wolf. And well, it died pretty fast. And it gave us some bones. Nice. And there's a dead rabbit it killed. We're gonna cook this for meat. Alright, so let's place the... Too much torch. I don't need that much. Anyway, so let's place the flame altar now. This will be our first base here. Now we commune with the flame. You are not alone. There are other survivors drowsing in the nearby ancient vaults. Find them so they may aid in your journey. But yeah, before we go on our journey, I'll need to chop some wood. As I need this to make a workbench and other stuff. Then made the workbench, place it beside the altar. Now we have access to a glider and a hook. So yeah, we can continue now. We can also make ourselves a bow to hunt animals with. I know this is a warrior run, but we need both because we can't chase down the animals. They're too fast for our legs. Oh, see that sheep right there? I don't think I can chase it down. That's why you have a wooden bow. And good thing we're good at this. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. What if we headshot it? See? And look, we get animal fur. Oh my god. Yeah. We leveled up. Decided to level up my constitution first so we last longer in a fight. Because we're kind of squishy. And we're also melee, so we really need the tankiness. So I explored Long Keep for a bit. And I got a bunch of free food just lying around and a campfire that teaches us how to cook food. So we'll be collecting a bunch of water in this old well. This is good for endurance and stamina recharge. Well, after all that extra thing I did, I decided to go to Braylon Bridge now to continue our quest on locating our allies. Because the flame said we were not alone and they were quite nearby. So I guess that we need to cross this bridge. But the bridge is broken. So we need to 
take another path, which is down here in the shroud. But before that, let's interact with all the items here. I'm not really a reading person, so I didn't bother reading all those texts. So we gotta go down now and go to the other side. Yeah, we'll need to collect a bunch of these mushrooms as well. Yeah, we needed these mushrooms in order to craft a magical chest. A magical chest is a game changer in this game. You can basically craft anything that's even inside the chest. As long as you're inside the flame altar location. So yeah, we're fighting the shroud again. He has a shield now. Pretty, pretty tanky guy. And it gave us a sigil ring of the elder guard, which adds 8 stamina and 10 health. Pretty neat if you ask me. Now we have one ring. We have 5 fingers, but the game only gives us 2 ring slots. Hmm. I also chopped a bunch of shroud wood because I needed this to make a glider, I believe, and also a grappling hook. So it's always nice to collect materials before heading back home. But I mean, we have a goal to get the blacksmith first, but I'd collect this stuff first. Hehe, <laughs> since it's nearby. So I don't need to come back again. Okay, that was kind of rough. We've spent some time doing random chores like collecting stuff <laughs> now we're watching a wolf chasing down a rabbit and the rabbit died oh my god so yeah currently i'm just resting my character so he gets the rested buff you can see it on the upper left the rested buff basically gives you endurance i think because it gives you like a lot of maximum stamina that means we can run and do stuff more so the limit is only five so we're done let's go get the blacksmith wait let's make our current first armor now so let's make the rag shirt see we have clothes so this is our objective right here this is an altar where the blacksmith is i totally for can't time this right oh i parried him Nice. Alright, so we've entered the area where the black myth is. But we have to fight this guy. Stunning them seems to be our way of killing them faster. And here we go. We got... Oswald Anders, the blacksmith. So it was getting somewhat late. I decided to make this place my new base. I need to transfer most of my stuff on the other base. Basically just the working bench. <laughs> this new base is great because there's a lot of objectives surrounding us. After I transferred all of my stuff, I decided to craft a new gear from Oswald. He was able to make me a new weapon called the Spike Club. But I just needed some nails. And good thing I have some scrap parts. So now I have a better weapon. <laughs> Next, I made myself a charcoal killin' so we can now make some charcoal. We will need this to make metal sheet in order to make a new armor set that's for warriors. I also crafted myself a glider and a grappling hook. Now we can proceed to our next quest. Chop some wood to put in the charcoal kiln and also mine some dirt. Oh, hey, we're processing charcoal. We're closer to our new armor set. Next, I decided my next goal would be to go to the tower nearby, which was access to grappling here, which we were kind of gatekeep. So we're finding these level three scavengers. They're pretty tough right now because our weapon is pretty bad. Just a common club we made from the blacksmith, but it's way better than our hatchet. I'm stronger. I'm not stronger. But yeah, I can whack you till you die. Oh, chest. Ooh, an executioner's axe. Now we have a two-handed weapon. But yeah, let's continue on. Let's get to this tower. So we have another save point. Getting yeah, to this tower is very crucial. These are good jump points with our glider and it's going to be awesome traveling to quest to quest just teleporting back to the tower and also in this tower this is an easy access to the future base i planned in the farm the tower had some kits where you push a button to open the door some hard to spot things to do like grappling so you can go to the other side dodging some spikes so you can go to where you want to also some ninja warrior courses you have to run through. And yeah, after all of that, eventually 
we reach the top. So yeah, this is the farm I wanted to make my base. This land I will claim as my own. I'm gonna fly there with almost two bars of stamina and I should be able to reach. Hopefully. If not, I'll make a stop at the nearby cliff. But for sure, I'll reach. Even with my low level glider, should be possible. Upon arriving, I notice a lot of vegetations here. These are free to grab and these things respawn as long as they're not covered by your flame shrine. So we have a bunch of stuff. I thought tomatoes were strength, but I was wrong. <laughs> so we have no strength buff yet. So I'm gonna place my altars here since we have a bunch of houses surrounding it. We're gonna be sleeping in one of those houses. This land is ours now. Once again, I need to transfer all of my stuff from my old base to this one. This will be the last time we'll be doing this because this is my main base now. And since I had access to crafting the fur armor set, this will be my first armor set for now. We'll be changing to the rising fighter set once we have made more metal sheets. Yo, look. We're armored now. <laughs> Yeah, the basic newbie gear will eventually look like a swordsman soon. I also found a hidden treasure right here. And it contained... Ah. <laughs> and it contained... Yo. Well, the potion and arrow is useful. Hey, Alright, so I decided today we'll be raiding an elixir well. As skill points are really needed now. So I just aimed down because my stamina bar wasn't that full to actually protect me from going there. I never had the rested buff yet. So this was fine. We'll just walk along and kill some scavengers while on the way. I <laughs> easily block the scavenger's arrow by just using my shield. The Executioner Axe is pretty strong, but it's very slow. I don't like it. Before I actually go to the Elixir Well, I decided to grab another ring from the Shroud here, where we cross the bridge. It's a guaranteed 100% that he will drop the ring, so why not? Yeah, we have two rings now. You know, I never fought a Shroud Archer up close, but did they change how they look? Because I don't remember them looking like this. They look more menacing than I remember. I had a mage and archer playthrough, but never a warrior. So it's pretty weird for me to look at them up close. And these guys with one-handed swords, they're pretty easy to block because their attack animation is simple. See, I keep parrying this guy. But this other two though, I don't think so. <laughs> I hate how slow they are. It's really hard to time. Anyways, let's go and defeat the boss guarding the shroud route. Basically just dodge that, whack him. If he kicks. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, okay. We're I forgot. We're tanky. Ouch, it hurts. Ouch. Ouch. Damn, good thing we're tanky. Oh my god. I'm just lucky we're tank. Oh. Keep forgetting to block, man. Oh, we got an epic version of our axe. Okay. Juicy, juicy, yummy skill points. Let's go. I decided to level up my warrior's path and strength as it added more damage to my melee attacks. Which was nice. And with enough materials, we can make the best item in the game. <coughs> wait, wait, wait. Now we can make the best item in the game. The magic chest. Now we don't need to bring items to craft something in our base. It will magically use the items inside the chest. So we don't need it in our inventory. We can just crap whenever we want. This is such a lovely item. I swear. Good thing they patch it so that we can craft it earlier. Because before we needed the, the carpenter to craft this. Now we can access this much earlier. I gathered some stone as make the forge needed a bunch of stone. So I went to the starter base again to grab some. And in this cliff, if you g jump, 
and go towards this castle. There's actually a hidden chest inside. Just around this area. Oh, I, I missed. <laughs> around this area. Yes, yes, yes. It's also a salt mine. There's a lot of salt surrounding this building. And we got legendary loot stuff. We don't need this. I'm so sad. I also dug up a treasure left behind by a farmer in this farm. And what we got here was kind of great. It was a legendary bow. We're not an archer, but this would help if ever we encounter enemies like a leech where it's immune to melee attacks. So yeah, I also visited this church. We had some undeads here. They're probably the remains of the people in the church. And underneath the church, we found a frozen core wand, an epic one. The game is telling us something to not be a warrior or something. Huh. Oh, I missed. <laughs> But yeah, I don't like the hunted weapons in this game because they're very slow. But I'm not sure how it will go once we have the um the there's a skill that increases the speed attack speed of two hundred weapons. But we need a bunch of skill points for that. So for now I won't be using it. So I head towards this area where the alchemist is at. So we're gonna be raiding a base of scavengers and we reach level three. Let's go. I'm gonna be saving up some points to get the jump attack. It's an AoE skill for the melee class. We're just gonna jump and boom. So I fought a bunch of scavengers so we can get to the wizard. And as you can see, the archers are not really doing anything to us right now. <laughs> They're not a threat at the moment. Now that we're armored with fur armor and these guys are just a level three. <laughs> After getting inside the vault, there are a bunch more waiting for me inside. So I dealt with them fairly quick. Yeah, shielding their attacks is uh, pretty nice. We don't use that much stamina. Oh, <laughs> I'm just eating the arrows, so it's fine. Yeah, no threat at all. And after fighting these one last, I mean two last enemies inside, we'll be getting the wizard out of his vault or jar. I'm waiting for him to attack me, but it's not attacking at all. I wanted to tie my duck, my block or parry. But anyways, he was so scared, I guess. I realized, did I call this guy the wizard, the wizard, the wizard? But yeah, we got the alchemist now. Now we can craft some potions to heal ourselves. But before I go home and summon the alchemist, I'm gonna go to this cave right here. This cave has a legendary level 3 sword that we can get. It was written on a text that there was a scavenger cave nearby. The one paper we... I didn't really read, but <laughs> the one paper that we were supposed to be reading is telling us that there's a scavenger cave here. So I beat up a bunch of scavengers guarding the cave. It wasn't really a problem as we have such a high health. But anyways, yeah, a legendary wailing blade. We don't need our club. We have our wailing blade. I instantly max the enhancement level of my blade to further increase its power. And also now we can craft ourselves a forge. We can now make a metal sheet. Let's go. So we'll need to wait to process this. But after we get our metal sheets, we can make the rising armor set. A new armor set from the blacksmith. I mean the rising fighter set. Look, and we also need some resins. We're gonna be chopping some wood for this. While waiting for the metal sheets to craft, I gathered a bunch of corn and plant fibers here as I needed more strings to make bandage. And I recently discovered that the corns are actually the ones that give strength. So now I'm gonna cook some of the corns. I then dug up the treasure once more and I got a legendary gulletin. I really don't like uh, two-handed weapons, so I'm probably gonna use this for a bit until I salvage it. So yeah, I cook a bunch of my meat and corn as I was waiting for the metal sheets to finish so we can have our armor set. But well, it's still not finished. So I decided to raid an elixir well nearby, just near the farm. So it's an extra plus three skill points once we finish this. With our new sword and fire being the weakness of the shrouded, they died really fast. Look, I can only, I, I only two shot them and they're dead. Easily 
went to the shroud route and well took care of the remainder of what's in here and chopped the wood <laughs> my timing is still not good <laughs> i just can't parry i need more practice chop 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 skill points i also went ahead and did an optional quest well basically just to discover this area that's called the rookmar there's really no quest here it's just discovery on this day, I strengthened the flame since I had all the materials. It added plus one to all my stats and also increased my shroud time. I also expanded my base a bit so it would cover the houses and the area where the blacksmith is. And since the metal sheets are done, I can finally make myself the rising... Never mind, I still needed animal fur and resins. So I chopped some trees for the resin. Hunted some goat for some animal fur. I now have the full rising fighter set. Looks pretty neat, right? But we still don't have the shield. I totally forgot to smelt more metal scraps. But it's okay. So I went ahead and raided the place which had the hunter. We're gonna be saving her because we need the backpack she makes for more inventory slots. In this place, there are monsters called the Vukas. They're weak to fire, which our sword is made of fire. And look at my jump attack. Pretty great AOE, right? <laughs> Just jump and attack. Jump and attack. So this shaman usually heals or casts lightning, but for some reason, I guess he was scared. He's like, kill this brethren, and he had no one to heal. Anyways, so after clearing some obstacles inside the vault, we got the hunter. Let's go. So we now have access to a drying rack, which makes dried fur, which can help us craft a new glider, but we would need the carpenter for that but now we can make a backpack so with the salt i mined a bit earlier in the game when i grabbed that chest remember the starting base i processed some dried first so we can make a small backpack once that's done i also made myself a shield so now we have a better looking shield also it has more block power look 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 we look better now sheesh Actually, pretty strong. What? Hello? <laughs> Alright, now this is the problem. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank God. Thank you, bees. Oh my God, the bee saved us from the bug. The plan is to get another legendary flame sword as the durability for melee weapons drains really fast. So I'm going to the scavenger cave again to get the sword. If only we could dual wield, we'll have two flame swords on our hand with no shield. But yeah, sadly no. I also mined a bunch of flint, around 20 would do. Uh, we'll need this to strengthen the flame to the next level. I had an optional quest nearby to go to an ancient obelisk, but I can't seem to find a way. So we make a way. Easy way to get up. Make a way. Oh, I'm dumb. There, yeah, see? Easy way to get up. Make a way. So after interacting with the obelisk, I found this tomb, so I rushed inside and got the rewards. Trash. I also broke this very lonely shroud route without any guards or any enemies here. So this is just basically a free skill point. I'm gonna chop you. Yes, I will. You're being chopped. And finally, I raided this scavenger camp with a mine shaft. It wasn't that hard because... Oh look, my timing. Yeah. It wasn't that hard because they're just level 3. Next, I went ahead and explored the salt mine because I didn't want to have any optional quests indicating in my map. Even if I didn't need salt anymore. But still, yeah, sure. Let's just kill some monsters here. There are They are good experience points. This place was actually infested with bugs. And the chest gives like level 5 items. But I wasn't lucky enough to actually get anything good for me. And upon entering this cave, I found this golden chest and it gave me a level, I mean, a legendary ring with life leech. But well, the 3% chance is not really that appealing, so I didn't use it. 
My dried fur is finally done. Now we can make a small ba- Alright, now with enough string, we can make the small backpack. A further expansion to our inventory. Let's go. Next up, I'm gonna go to the tower. The one you see right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna need a new uh teleport point so I can go to my other quests easier. But yeah, I saw the shroud route out of nowhere, so I decided to just chop it down and fight whatever is here. There was actually a brute here, so we're gonna Oh my god, you yeah, you can't block that. <laughs> so for that kind of attack, let's just dodge it. And for the other attacks, we can roll and block. But for the charge blade, I'll probably just need to like dodge roll it. But it was pretty simple. It's just a level 5 brute and we got another staff. Why? So yeah, after that, I made my way to the tower and then got to the top. Next, I dove in to go to the location where the carpenter is. So we can craft a better glider once we unlock him. So I stopped by this flame shrine first since it's close. And afterwards, I found the bridge where there was the entrance to the vault where the carpenter lies. And as I was trying to dig a hole here because I couldn't climb up, the shrouded noticed me. So they charged at me. They were level 7 here. But yeah, it's not a problem since good thing we have our fire sword which is their weakness. It doesn't say effective though. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, we, we dealt with them pretty quick. As I head inside the vault, there were a lot of insects just sprawling about. These were good for XP farming. And since we're using a melee weapon, it wasn't really that hard to slash everything. Except for the babies. I can't hit them. I know this is a melee run, but here's the problem we have. These leeches, I mean, magician undead or sh and shrouded, they can't be hit by any melee weapon, and the only way we can kill them is using a bow. So this is my mortal enemy. I have no other way of defeating them aside from a bow. I won't have any bow skills though, so don't worry. So we won't be able we won't be using we won't be focusing on the bow, it's just for this and the sickle sight boss near the end which we're gonna cry because it's really hard to beat that thing. Not even sure how I'm gonna defeat the fell sickle sight with only a bow on hand without any skills to support its damage. But we'll do our best. So there was this area where there was a treasure and I got a level 7 legendary short bow. Pretty neat. We can change our uh, level 3 legendary. But yeah, I got a problem. I fell. <laughs> now I'm dead. For sure I'm dead. I can't climb back and this wood slides. So I can't really do anything. Uh. Upon arriving at the area, yeah, my loot is down there. I hate it. So I, I had to mine <laughs> like this. Eventually I reach it and was, man was able to retrieve my items. Now we just gotta mine back up for a bit and double jump out of here. So yeah, I found the area where the carpenter is. I needed to mine more of rubbles so I can get to where the hunter is. And there was a leech. I mean a mage. Let's just call it a leech. Because leeches are magicians, right? Anyways, so yeah. There was a leech guarding the way. But don't worry, no problem. We have a bow on hand and we defeated it. It was time to save the carpenter. Let's go. We have saved the carpenter. Now that's left is saving the farmer and we have all our allies in our base. The next day, the carpenter wanted us to raid this tomb which contained something he wanted. So yeah, I hurriedly raided this place. It wasn't really that hard. The spiders were pretty weak. Just one shot from our sword. And the reward I got here is a bone block. You may have thought that it would be an epic item because how cool the tomb looks. But we just got blocks for the carpenter. He's happy at least. So next, I'm here now at the vault where the farmer lies. So I'm just gonna head straight there. Good thing with our double jump, we had no problem climbing this here. Yeah, double jump is really handy. You should get one if you don't have one. 
And after running through obstacles, pushing the buttons, and doing some Ninja Warrior courses, we got the Farmer. Let's go. And well, I noticed there was an elixir well nearby, so I went to it. It seems the monsters here were level 9 and I was, you know, I was just eating casually while this guy was trying to kill me. But no matter, it wasn't a problem. Flame sword, very effective against shrouds. As I reached the route, I wasn't expecting that there was a party here. There were so many mobs. <laughs> and there was even the brute. There's gonna be a- we're gonna have a hard time. So I kind of lured the brute away before I mowed everything down and almost died, but we're alive, so it's fine. Yes, that's what matters. Good thing we had some potions with us. So yeah, these guys, let's kill them one by one, so we only need to think about the brute. Oh, what happened? Oh. Well, yeah, he's dead already. Oh, he's not. Hey. Okay, we won. That was crazy. Chop, chop, chop. Raided the Hills of Scavengers because it was along the road. I was on my way to the Alchemist Tower, but since I saw this, sure, why not? So yeah, look, look, let me show you the jump attack. Alright, so after clearing out the minions of the Scavenger Gurger Matron. Oh, never mind, there's one more. So, uh, let's deal with this and we'll fight the Matron. Let's do that. Oh my god, he acid sprayed. Come here, come here, come here, come here, big fella. Come here. We're gonna rush him in the moment he threw some potion. Because we're not gonna get hit. There we go. Are those elixirs on his way? It seems the potion is getting- Oh! Oh! Oh, oh my god! Oh! Potion! Oh lord! Oh my god, the potion saved me. <sighs> oh, what the hell? All right, round two, round two. We got this. Well, we're, we're slowly tickling him. I can push too. There we go. Okay, I have a strategy now. So when he does that, I run. With this potion, I shield or hide somewhere. Dude, that is very dangerous. I will die in one shot. That okay, for sure. You're dead. Woo, took a while, but he's dead. So I continued my journey towards the alchemist tower and we arrive at Lone Thistle. This place was warming with level 11 monsters. It wasn't a problem though because we have our jump attack and yeah we dealt a lot of damage because of our fire sword. Look at this. But there's this one guy that's level 15 but no problem. The attack animation of this guy is very obvious. It's so easy to parry. But he was pretty, pretty tanky I guess. Being level 15 and all, and my weapon is just level 3. But still, we got this. See? <laughs> if we had merciless attack, this guy would have already been dead. Okay, so as we discovered the alchemist tower, I instantly explored what was above of the tower. And I found the secret switch for the door in the basement. And so, I got the mortar, finishing the quest. So yeah, to make the advanced glider, I needed some linen and also some shroud sacks. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. I will farm those blue flowers in the shroud. They drop the shroud sack we need for the glider. As for the linen, we'll need to locate the hand spindle of the elk. I mean of the hunter. Which should be easy. We already have the markings on our map. We'll just go there when we can. I decided to raid an elixir well on day 17 because it was pretty close. 
And upon killing the brute, I got a legendary staff. Which we don't need. That's so sad. So anyways, after chopping down the root, I didn't get any skill point. I didn't realize I've already cleared this elixir well. I just did not, yeah, did not realize at all. I was so sad. <laughs> I wanted more skill points. I don't remember clearing this area. Moving on, I went to Westcott. This area was filled with level 9 scavengers. I was here to look for the hunter's hand spindle. But instead, I got a letter going to a nearby camp, which supposedly had her hand spindle. But it seems it doesn't, and it's telling us to go somewhere else. <laughs> nice. So I raided this tomb called the Necropolis. I didn't want to waste some lockpicks, so I just chopped the door off. And then started my adventures inside. There were lots of skeletons, but yeah, they're weak to fire as well. They were, not, they, were, they were never a problem at all. The undead, the enshrouded, not a problem. The scavengers, yes. Because <laughs> they're weak to ice, not fire. Oh, we found the tomb already. <laughs> I hate this game. Give me a weapon. That's for me. So yeah, finally I had a mission I was waiting for. I will now challenge the VUCA Brawler. And this... In this area where the VUCA Brawler is, there's a blessing called the VUCAR, which gives us 20% bonus melee damage or 30%. I don't remember. Alright, so let's regenerate all the stamina we can. And buff up some elixir. And let's fight. He already saw us. Let's take care of this one. Well, the main monster is not. hasn't noticed us yet. Roar. Build up. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the Buka buff. Wait, wait. Let's fight this without the Buka buff. It's gonna be unfair if we do. It's not gonna be unfair, but... Oh my god. I forgot I can't dodge this thing. We're better off not getting distance to this guy because he will jump and jumping is pain. Yeah, we can just shield up. Look at his damage. Can't do anything to us. We just need to shield up. Your butt is open. Wow. Yeah. You're dead. Go ahead inside. Alright, so let me show you the power of this blessing. Um, let's see. Character. We have 42% melee damage and critical 55. I'm um, not sure. Ooh, 400% merciless attack. So yeah, notice this. And then we take the blessing. It's a 30 minute long blessing. So basically, we got a 20% increase on our melee damage. And that's amazing, you know? That's better than <laughs> nothing. Anyway, so I'll put an altar here. I'm gonna be taking this blessing a bunch of times. It's 20% damage after all. Day 19. I went to a tomb that the alchemist wanted me to go to to retrieve the eternal ice bolt. We'll not be using this, but I just wanna complete my side quest. Just cause. And I then relocated all my NPC inside this small house so they can be sheltered now i can craft a bunch of stuff like the fireplace so i don't need to put campfire besides my bed each time i want to sleep <laughs> so now we have warmth while we sleep so in this abandoned house this is where i sleep i have a campfire beside me so i'm warm next up i decided to raid the missbury catacomb there's a quest called the queen's tomb and this is what we'll be doing. There is a, sh a rare shield inside that we need. We can get. 
there was a lot of killing and like exploring a maze just pushing buttons before we can actually get the shield i hate this place it's very time consuming to you know get the shield oh yeah after all the trouble of locating all the buttons i always ask myself if it was worth the time to get this shield but hey look it glows it glows blue cool right oh found the hazel now there's our plus three strength food see this see this right it's very easy to collect it gives plus three strength and it's there's a bunch of them you can just keep getting this and this hazelnut tree i don't know what happens if you cut it down though it just gives twigs but anyways yeah there's a bunch of trees here i collect a bunch of hazelnut we'll never run out we already have 12. there was an elixir well nearby so i decided to raid it as well i really want skill points more skill point means more power or more defense because we have more strength and more constitution but for now my goal was to get the swift blade skill so we can have faster attack speed on our one hand weapons so raiding elixir walls was really one of my priorities and also getting the poison sack i mean sack shroud sack i am honestly lost on how to go to the shroud so i just decided to jump <laughs> from behind there's, there were a lot of them inside this place, but it's okay. Our jump attack should do the trick. <laughs> but yeah. It, it, oh my god, we're surrounded. But yeah, our jump attack prevails. Oh my lord, I'm dying. But oh my, I can't jump attack. They're, they're just, you know, disturbing my animation. I swear, I need to remove this skill. <laughs> it's not that useful at all. <laughs> I'd rather hack and slash the monsters down here and get like a merciless attack instead of the jump attack. So yeah, our shroud timer is almost zero. We have like 59 seconds left, so let's chop this down first. And let's destroy what remains here. Oh, my address are broke. Good thing we have an extra. Stop running! Come back! Yeah. Alright. Yeah, what actually awaited us was farming. So I made two seed beds so I can grow some black seedlings and chamomile seedlings. I then lay out some farm soil at the back side of this area so I can... This is where, where I'm gonna plant the seeds. I then went back to Lone Thistle because I wanted a sword here. It was a level 11 epic ice blade. So yeah, I went here in search for an epic sword. It was the level 11 Hail Scourge. It's a better weapon compared to our legendary level 3 Wailing Blade. So yeah, this is gonna be my main weapon for now until we find a better sword. Next, I continued with my life as a farmer, laying out all the flax seedling and chamomile seedling I have on hand. Strengthen the flame to level 3, further increasing my stats by 1. And also my flame altar slots. While exploring around, I found this Fenrig's farm. It contained a lot of berries and mushroom. These are gonna be good for crafting some potions we'll need. Cause you know, we don't have water aqua. I mean water aura and it's nerfed. So we'll need a bunch of potions in order to survive this world. Aside from the bandages. I then explored Revelwood where I discovered the Lost Pasture. It had a lot of these monster plants and it also had a lot of hazelnut I was gonna extract. I would like get about three stacks. That should last the entire game. <laughs> hazelnuts are so... How do you call it? What's the word? There's so many hazelnuts you can pick up in this game. And plus three strength without cooking it, it's already amazing. On day 24, I crossed this bridge full of scavengers. I wanted to go to the ancient spire of Revelwood. So these were my obstacles right now. But they're not really a problem since we have our new sword, the Hail Scourge. And our jump attack is actually de dealing great damage to them, even pushing them afar. So yeah, we're very close to the tower. We now have a jumping point so we can go to our quest far easily. Honestly, the forest was huge. It was actually hard trying to find a way up this tower. So I made myself a shortcut. Using my bombs and my pickaxe, I tried to find terrains where I can just jump and go through mountains faster than your usual way. Because I have no idea how to get to the front of this tower. 
So this works. Let's go. <laughs> and after arriving at the tower, my usual shenanigan is breaking all these jars because they contain wonderful loots. And in Revel the Re the Revelwood Ancient Spire, it has copper bars now. That means we don't need to mine as much copper, but mining copper isn't really an issue. Still, it's free items like potions. Potions, the buff potions are amazing. I don't want to craft them since I don't want to collect the materials. I just want to get them from these jars. So from avoiding obstacles, breaking some jars for items, getting treasures, and finally reaching the top. Let's go. Revelwood Ancient Spire. And since we have gotten a copper bar, we can now see the next armor set we're gonna be making. I'm planning to make the adventurer set because I'm set on being an adventurer than a tank. <laughs> so we're going for the adventurer set. Because I like the stats more than the tank set. Oh look, my plants have grown. Now time to collect these flax. We won't be using them yet because we don't have the hand spindle. But it's always good to have a lot on stock. Because you know, these plants will be needing a whole bunch of them to make the linen. And then late game, fabric. And then late late game, padding. It's gonna require a lot of flax. Like a lot of flax. This is not even enough. Next, I discovered a place called a Carpentry Camp. I was led here by a quest called the Oswald's Chest or something. I didn't find anything here though, but some pigs tried to attack me. So yeah, I, I appreciate the effort. I need the raw game after all, because these gives like plus three constitution. Pretty good. Delicious meat. So yeah, my next point of interest was the forge location. So we can finally mine some copper ores and melt all the all the ores to turn them to bars and we can finally make wait not really we need the hand spindle as well for linen so we won't be able to make the armor yet <laughs> but still we'll have the bronze we'll need then we can go get the hand spindle and make the armor set progression am i right it was already late at night but good thing we have our hail scorch lighting the way <laughs> such a small light so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna summon a wisp of light to guide us from the darkness as we go through the forge location. So I reach a place called the Mark of Sameth, and here lies the forge somewhere in this mine shaft. So there were a bunch of scavengers, but a hail scourge took care of them very easily. Also our Vuka Vuka buff. Man, 20% melee damage is so good. And also our elixir buff which gives like 30% more damage. So that's plus 50% already. Just with the buffs I have. It's crazy. And I found this nifty chest right here. And it gave me the hero shield. All the effort for the pike mead shield is like gone now. The hero shield is way better. Look, we look like Zelda with our master sword. And the hail scorch. Uh, time to... Yeah, time to mine this and get the crucible here. So, okay, we got the crucible. Now we can make the forge that the blacksmith wanted. But there's one big problem. Yeah, the smelter needed fire bricks. And to make fire bricks, we need to, like, make the killing from the carpenter. And then we need some clay in order to make the killing. So it was time to mine some clay and copper. I'm gonna be changed to a mining class. So yeah, the best way for this was taking all the, you know, mining skills. There's only just two. Or we can make it three. Additional resource, mining, and the good quality item. And everything else, I put it to like an endurance stat. Sweet tooth was especially helpful since we were eating honey to regenerate stamina fast. So the clay and bronze aren't really a problem location-wise. It's just below the Revel Tower teleport point. So I just dive in and there we go. There's clay right here. And just below this is the bronze. So for now, let's get some clay so we can make the killin and start making the fire bricks while we mine some coppers. I got about three stacks of clay before I stopped mining here. So I made a killin, slapped in some wood and clay inside and start processing fire bricks. It's gonna take a while before we collect about 50 of them. <laughs> so let's go mine some copper ores. 
And like I said, for the copper ores, it's just at the same location, but at a lower floor than the clay. See, mining copper and clay is not really hard. You just need to know the location. Just get to the tower and there you go. Copper. A lot of them. My bricks still weren't finished, so I decided to just chop some trees. <laughs> I had nothing else to do, man. I'm just waiting for the bricks so I can get my uh, smelter and I can just put my copper ores there. Then I can go on and do my mission to get the hand spindle or something. Finally made the smelter. So yeah, let's slap in all our copper except for 15 pieces. We'll need the 15 pieces for uh, strengthening the flame. So yeah, the only thing I can make right now is the helmet as it didn't require any linen so i made one because why not look we're robocop now if you know that guy next i raided the thorn hold this should have the higher level gorgor matron we're gonna fight her see how it goes with our level 11 epic sword we're, we're clearing this pretty fast look we're one shotting the wolf and we're like three shotting the scavengers it's pretty good I kept going until I reached the Fawn Song Frontier. And look, in this place, we have the, the most hated enemy I have in this game. The Green Scavenger. And yeah, it's going pretty well. Look, them. They're not that hard. Melee's kind of strong, actually. When I was a major and an archer, that, that thing was like very scary as heck. It's still scary, but less because we're tankier now. Look, they only deals like a, a few of our HP. I currently have around 9 constitution, I believe. So he, he packs a punch and he's really tanky. But still, we, we won't fear him because we can heal up anyways. After taking care of a bunch of scavengers in the area, I got the table saw the carpenter was looking for. And now it's finally time to fight the boss in the area. Yeah, but wait, there's this green scavenger here. I'm gonna lure him away and kill him first. And then we can fight the Gorger Matron. Or, I mean, the Scavenger Grizzler Matron. Let's just call it the Scavenger Matron. I think they have different names. The other one was the Gorger, and now it's the Grizzler. Alright, so I'm gonna go in an open area so we don't, you know, suffer from an acid bite. Look at that straight line of easy acid bite for him if I wanted to fight him straight. So we'll, we'll wait for him. If it's poison, I can just push like this. It won't damage me. But he... Oh. Yeah, if he rubs his... No, no, it's not poison. Attack once. I need evasive attack if I want to. Alright. Right. Oh, level 10. Let's not be greedy. Cause he, he does his acid bite, we're done for. Okay. He's dead. After defeating the matron, I got the tard bow. A rare tard bow, but I don't plan on using it because we already have the forest longbow, which is way better. Longer pulling time, but higher damage against those mage, flying mages. Next, I went to this place that the hunter wanted me to go to. It's called a, a, a an optional quest called a test of skill, and it led me here to a hunting ground with an ancient obelisk. So okay, I guess there's a bunch more things we need to do on the earlier level maps before we proceed to our next goals. So with the copper bars finished melting, I made myself a copper axe and a pickaxe. Now we have an upgrade to our tools. But sadly, we still can't make the armor set because we don't have any linen. The copper still wasn't enough, so I decided to mine some more. But this time, we had a copper pickaxe, which should make the job way easier than before. Next up, I went to find a cave entrance the hunter wanted me to go through, which should hold the hand spindle. It was this cave right here. It was full of uh, spiders. So yeah, I didn't really want to fight these guys. I just want the hand spindle so I can start processing my flax to linen. So I just 
went ahead, broke everything, killed all the spiders on the way, and headed straight to the hand spindle. Yeah, we can finally make our armor after getting this. But yeah, I decided to just, you know, kill a bunch of spiders, because why not? They're gonna be good experience points anyways. Hey, hey, come here. Boom. So after getting home, I placed it right away and hurriedly tried to get all the flax I have. There's also some flax behind me that already grew and we have a bunch of seed as well that we can start processing straight up. I'm gonna leave 5 flax on my seedlings so you can keep making more. I need a water though, so I'm gonna put some water after harvesting all of this. So yeah, I have about a stack and 18 pieces of flax that would make us a bunch of linen. But honestly, that's still lacking. We'll need more. I don't think it's even enough. I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> so anyway, I started planting the flax seedlings I made before I went on a mission. So yeah, this will serve as a purpose on our next endgame armor. And now, with some linen on hand, I can finally make an advanced glider. This would be very useful in going to places at the towers. And for the adventure set, I can make the set. Actually, not yet. I need four more linen for my boots. But look, look. Look at this. I'm not sure if it looks cool. We have a teeny tiny cape and um, I'm, I'm not sure how to react to this. Arm. But it looks, it looks better. But I guess we're, we're missing the boots to complete the set. And now we have enough linen. Let's make the boots and see how we look. Well, it looks alright. <laughs> we, we look like we're stronger than before. We're, we're, we look more menacing than before. I also made the level 14, I mean, the yeah, the level 14 shield. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, we've upgraded our gears. Now we should proceed with our missions. So I went inside this hole to look for a shroud root that was inside. It was, bit, it was pretty here. The blue illuminations from the mycelium that is actually poison to everyone and will kill us eventually. The shroud, basically. So yeah, I found the root here and I started chopping it down for skill points. And there was a treasure here and I got another staff we don't need. <laughs> Next, I went to an area called the Bramble Spine Boneyard. I was gonna raid this boneyard and see what items it provided, like what treasures lies within. So okay, let's start the raid. There were a bunch of level 15 shrouded here, but it wasn't really a problem as our sword basically, you know, deals with them fairly quickly. Our melee damage is too high for them to keep up and our attack speed from Swift Blade is just too fast. The only thing I hate about this place is it was a very deep. <laughs> I'm not sure where I am in this place anymore. But there's just so many places to go to and I'm kind of lost. And here I fought a shrouded that had a shield like me. <laughs> so they were basically just whacking each other and guarding until one person collapses from being stunned. Which would be the shroud because we have more stamina than him. And here we have our nemesis. The magician floating undead where we can't deal with unless we shoot it with arrows but this is the only thing i am not using a melee weapon for and this is very annoying look at our damage it's so cute we can't do anything against this guy all we can do is pray that we don't suffer that much <laughs> and we can eventually kill it yeah I'm scared what the future holds regarding the fell sickle site we're gonna be in so much trouble I eventually found where the tomb was and there was a bunch of shrouded here. There was the mage which I had to run away from so I can one on one this brute before I take care of the mage with my bow. So yeah, it wasn't really a hard fight. The brute's attack pattern is very simple now. I know how to fight it with me- never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, I, I was just careless there. But anyways, I know how to fight this with melee now. You just dodge that big strike of his. The kick really doesn't matter much. But the combo, you can also dodge roll that. But I guess I was so bad I couldn't dodge roll that. And we got a legendary level 15 bow, which was pretty amazing. And now... Yeah. Let's kill the mage. 
Taking care of this, as you can see, is pain. <laughs> but anyways, after we're done with this mage, we, we should be... Oh, look at the headshot. Alright, so let's let's take the loot. Then let's open up the tomb. See what we get from here. See here. Trash. So next, I went to the upper uppermost right. And the uppermost left side of the map. And here you can see there are a lot of embers. We need about 15 of them to strengthen the flame. So yeah, for now, I'm gonna target the shroud root. And on the shroud root location, there should be a lot of amber as well. So I'll be mining there. Location I'm talking about is inside this cave. And just more deeper to this cave, we should find the shroud root. It's very dark here and I'm pretty lost. But good thing our sword glows. I'm just gonna, I'm looking for like a bright red light. Basically the shroud root to show us the way where it is. So yeah, there it is, I think. <laughs> so let's head over there right now and see if I was correct. Yes, I was correct. I see the shroud root. Let's go. So I chopped it down and after chopping this down, I was hoping to see three chests here. But it seems the game updated. There's no more chests in this spot. There was supposed to be a chest here. See that brown spot? That was supposed to be a chest. And see that big giant pillar? That's supposed to be a chest as well. But at least they kept this chest right here which had a higher chance of getting gold and epic items. My goal in this area was simple. Just to destroy the shroud root for some skill points and then mine about 15 amber for strengthening the flame. And lastly farm the three chests supposedly to get new swords. But since there's only one chest left that's fine with me. I'll farm a weapon here with that one chest. It honestly took me a while to mine the area so I can get to the top right here. So I can put my pillar down. So now with our flame pillar here, it was time to farm. And look, we got a white wolf sword. Dang, we have a legendary level 15 sword now. We don't need our level 3 legendary. We have a better sword now. So after getting myself the noble sword, I was already satisfied. So it was time to continue our journey. But of course, after being away for a while, all our plants have grown. Now I have a bunch of flax waiting to be harvested. And I'm gonna make more because I know this isn't enough. This is not even the tip of the endgame items that we need to farm for. The life of a farmer. Heck yeah. I went back to the amber cave as I forgot to mine the ambers. So now that I have around 15 amber, it's time to proceed to our next quest. So I tried out my new sword against these undead and they die in two hits. I guess because they're just level 13. I guess that's understandable. <laughs> I'm stuck again. I really need to remove this jump attack. It's so buggy. But good thing this nice undead saved us from our, the bug. So another optional quest, I went to this grind teeth grotto as there was a shroud root uh, stemmed down here. So I was here to just destroy it real quick. Cause why not? Skill points. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about the medium backpack. So now we expanded our inventory. Let's go. Alright, so afterwards, I decided to hunt some elixir wells cause I really wanted more skill points. And look at the noble sword in action, dealing massive damage on these level 11 and shrouded monsters. Ho oh, ho, there's a brute here. I don't want to charge him in because there's a lot of holes there that I might fall to and die. So I'm going to let him come to me. Come here. <laughs> he missed his kick, he missed his sword, and I slash him to death. Let's go. Alright, let's go to this another elixir well. I, I'm just farming skill points right now. I really need a lot. Oh my god! I almost died. I touch, I touch poop. Good thing there was this ball of fire here. Save us from the shrouded debuff. 
<laughs> Anyways, we almost died there. Oh my god. I did not notice there was an enshrouded part there. I mean, the the red thingy. I don't know what it's called. The deadly shroud root. Red root. Well, whatever. So yeah, feeling really confident. I just dove in straight to the root. But then I saw two brutes. I should take them one by one. But if one gets alerted, both of them come. And as you can see, I have Water Hour right now. And it only heals 3 HP per second. It kinda sucks. The nerf is so bad. But it also because I just don't have any int right now. And also, our currently our current Water Hour doesn't have that extra passive that doubles the amount of healing. Next, since this Glenwood area or the Glenwood end was also an optional quest, and the monsters here are level 16, I decided to raid this place just to finish my optional quest. The farmer has a request for us here to dig up a treasure that's like piled up in trash. So we'll get to there soon. For now, let's defeat all the monsters here. I had an oopsie here where I fl place a flame altar and when I went home to, you know, buff up the matron, I mean the scavenger matron didn't spawn anymore. I'm so sad. Well, anyways, after digging up a pile of dirt, I got treasure. Your garbage is my treasure now. And I got warrior chest, which I won't use. <laughs> but it does look cool though. Look at this. Damn. But yeah, let's go on with our adventurer's chest. I then went to this abandoned hunter's camp to get the optional quest done. And also to read all these random notes. I won't... I mean, when I say read, I don't read. I just interact with these random notes. <laughs> and well, we're finally almost done with all the optional quests, the shroud routes, and other stuff we need to do on the low level areas. I'm just preparing myself to what's to come for part 4. Basically, we'll be going to Pike Mead's Reach. It's a city infested with shroud. And there's like a bunch of shroud roots there. So we're gonna be going there next after my preparations. Also, I have rested most of my flax. Our future endgame content flax. <laughs> I will need to make or plant more of these. So yeah. Uh, just your average day of farming, chilling, restocking on our buffs, food, and everything else at base. And then, the action begins on part 3. I reassigned my skill. I removed the jump attack and I also removed the water aqua. I instead added an evasion attack. And also a, the, what was it called again? Something that heals me 5% of my health if I critically strike. And then I also went for the tank tree. I fully max out the warrior th tree because I want the swift blade. But yeah, I also got the double jump because it's just too good to pass on. So now, I'm just gonna take care of this last shroud root that's in the lower levels. And I screwed up. And I'm dead. And it's over. And I died. Yeah. Well, good thing I had a altar nearby. <laughs> so anyways, let's take the safer route. Ouch. I'm just gonna jump through these rocks one by one until we reach the goal. Which is our tombstone and the shroud root. It shouldn't be that hard, just double jump, safety, and then to the next area, we double jump again. And we carefully walk along this, or wood here, so we don't fall. And yeah, we can grab our item. Okay, okay careful now. Woo! We achieved everything, and now let's deal with the shroud root. So yeah, we encountered a large fell thunder brute again after destroying the shroud root. But his attack patterns are nothing new to us. We're very familiar of how to dodge on every strike he does. So this guy was not a problem anymore. Alright, day 41. I went to this place called Netherthon. There's really nothing here, no nothing of importance. I'm just saying I discovered this place. It's an, uh, one of my optional quests. Uh, there's an ancient obelisk on top that I need to reach and it seems like this isn't the right place but 
At the very least, there's also this box containing some random blocks that the carpenter would be happy about. So after running around for a while, I eventually found a way to the ancient obelisk. And now we have unlocked a lot of spots with shroud roots we haven't discovered yet. Uh, I know I said that I have conquered all the shroud roots, but there's actually three more left. Wait, actually, two. Or three. Three, yes. We need to defeat all the shroud roots before we go to Pike Meets Reach. Alright, so the first shroud root I wanted to defeat was kind of hiding in a tricky spot but good thing we can u-turn while we're flying so that's one down the next one wasn't really that hard to find but it's pretty dangerous here because there's a lot of uh you know those red things that kill you when you step on it so yeah this thing was just basically near the Voca a Vuka brawlers arena the arena where we got our blessing so yeah that's the second one down the last one is a shroud root from the salt mines I just couldn't find when I was here. But now we found it thanks to the ancient obelisk showing us the way. Actually my bad, there was a fourth one. <laughs> so yeah, this would be the last shroud root we need to defeat in the low level area. And then we're done here. It was time to proceed to our next area of interest. The Pike Mead. Today, I finally decided to go to Pike Mead's Reach, but before that, I went to the Skimmer's Cove as, as I was near and got this golden chest containing an archer glove, which I didn't really need, so I just deleted it. Next, I made my way and inv invaded Pike Mead's Reach. My goal here was two things. First would be to destroy all the Shroud Root, and next is to collect the Guard of the North set, even if I don't plan on using it. I just wanted to collect it, so I don't see any optional quests on my map. And lastly, we need to defeat the dragon, the blue giant dragon. I keep forgetting the name. Fell dragon. Also, forgetting to mention, I was also here to get the kettle for the farmer. It was just right here in the fling sanctum I just dropped into. So now I got a kettle. We can make a fireplace and now we can automate our cooking of meat, vegetables, and other stuff inside the kettle. For our first shroud root, there was a brute guarding it. But yeah, brutes are no match for us right now. We already know its attack patterns. It's so very easy to dodge. Every time he tries to strike, there's a strike him back and he's dead. Let's go. Now let's defeat the, the shroud root. For the next shroud root, there wasn't really anything here aside from a swarm of shrouds, which we annihilated very easily with our noble sword as they approach me behind, in front, just smacking and smacking, but I can also do the same thing. I can smack and smack as well. So even if they gang up on me, my constitution is too high and I have a passive called, I think, Battle Heal. That heals me 5% of my HP every time I crit. So that's crazy. So yeah, we'll never die. <laughs> well, I encountered another brute again and showed him who's boss. It was a very easy fight as usual. Ouch. He kicked me though. <laughs> but yeah, we, we merged victorious. So far, I have the Guard of the North chest plate, the pants, and the gloves. We're just missing the boots and the helmet, and we've completed everything. Before I actually go to fight the big blue dragon, I decided to make an altar just outside the castle. Because I can't make any altars near here because it's uh, enshrouded and there's also monsters nearby. So if ever I die, I can just go back to my altar nearby. It's time to raid the castle. So yeah, it was now time for the boss fight. The boss has appeared and disappeared. Ouch. Oh, it hurts. Oh my god. Ah, oh my god. He, he actually hurts. He's busy trying to do whatever it's trying to do. Oh, shielding is ineffective. What am I doing? I'm just like laying under his belly. Oh! Every critical strike, 5% heal, so we basically just get full again. Oh. 
No, 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 no. You hit his face like that when he charge up and you kill it very fast. Oh my god, this boss is so easy. And it's already dead. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we have slain the... What's its name again? Fell with a wyvern. We have the commander string, which I won't be using. The pike mid's key, I can finally go to the castle. And now we got the guard of the north helmet. We don't have the complete set, but anyways... I'm, I don't I don't want to look for the boots anymore. But anyway, it looks, looks so cool, right? Check it out. <laughs> yeah, we won't be using it because of the lower shroud time, and we're not uh, jack of all trades. Basically, the guard of the Nord is something that boosts the jack of all trades character, like your magic, your range attack, and your melee. But we're purely melee, so we'll just use purely melee armor set. Yeah, I lied. I actually got the boots because I just can't help myself. I, I wanted to complete the set. I won't be using it though, so I don't know why I got the set. So, anyways. Let's let's go to our next area of interest. The Fisher Tail. Well, this is the name of the optional quest. After approaching the area that was supposed to be the Fisher Tail, it tells me that the town is called the White Wind. I'm not sure if I'm being bamboozled, but I guess the fisherman was telling a tale about this town. It's called the White Wind. I don't know. I, I don't read the lures, the text, or anything in this game. I'm just making something up. But anyways, there's a lot of bugs here. They were great XP. We were almost leveling up. As I was approaching this note sometimes, the bugs try to push you and kill you. So a good thing I rolled away. And I'm to safety. So more experience for me for killing all these bugs. They were pretty strong because they're level 13. They're crazy. Next up, I made a bunch of chamomile tea. I'm still not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. But anyway, we buffed up on our uh, buffs. We have a hazelnut, a game, I mean a grilled game, and the chamomile tea. I think the chamomile tea is the only high tier we have aside from the raw game which gives a plus 3 constitution. The chamomile tea has plus 5 health regeneration and plus 3 endurance. Very helpful on our stamina which is very low. As you can see, my flax are already ready for harvest. So I started my farming duties and harvested everything. And look at my hotbar. I also have 80 more seedlings I need to plant. So we'll, our time will be consumed from farming for this. This will be very helpful in the future as we need a lot of flax and li uh, to process a linen. After obtaining all the materials, I leveled up my flame to level 4. And now we can see our next goal of materials. There are a lot we need and I have zero of everything. But eventually we'll fall into all of them. So to the next area we go. Well after planting all of these flax of course. So after passing through the place called the Glimmer Rock Mine. I eventually reached the gate to the Pillar of Creation. Oh yeah, as I go to the gate, I've been smashing a couple of these jars. They contain a lot of new materials from the next area. Like the bronze bar, the tin bar, the shroud meteor shower, a wisp of light, a bone fossil, bone dance, a bone dust fossil, and a lot of other stuff. So yeah, they're really good to smash and loot while we're on our way to the next area. I'm probably gonna farm here from time to time because it's just too good. I'd rather collect these than collect raw materials and make those stuff we need. After going through some obstacles, rolling fire meatballs, and some spike traps, we eventually reach the ancient obelisk. Okay, so let's interact with this so we can see where the next shroud boots we should target are found. And also the flame shrines. Oh, I also had another mission in this area. It was to look for uh, the carpenter's tools. Which was that glowing light over there. But I was too busy looting random stuff in this camp. It contained a lot of goodies as well. So yeah, this place is a treasure trove. The gate of pillars of creation. Day 48, I did a bunch of uh, random things like collecting some salt because I needed this to make 
a bread later on and I also needed this to make more dried fur out of my animal furs it will be needed later when we need to make some leather because leather needs dried furs afterwards I went back to the research camp at the gate of pillars of creation let's just call it the pillars of creation I'm tired of saying gate of pillars of creation but anyways yes 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 so I farmed this area for a bit because I needed a restock on my buff potions. This place is basically a treasure trove of those speed elixir, a wisp of light, the scroll of uh, fire or something, <laughs> and the flask of fell. Yeah, yeah, the speed potion. There's no elixir here, so I need to farm it on another area. I'm just farming a bunch before I explore the new area. Well, anyways, after farming, the very first thing we see on this new place is the Avuka camp. Full of level 5, level 16 Avukas. They were not really that hard to kill. I also have a new skill called Shockwave. If we manage to stun the enemy or break the enemy, I think our melee damage increases. As you can see in their head, there's like a broken shield icon. And as you can see, the effect is also like a shockwave, which pushes them back. We destroy this camp so fast. The melee character in Shroud is actually very OP if built right with strength and constitution. It's crazy. And I'm gonna make this my new camp for the blessing. Not the VUCA arena anymore because there's also a blessing here. See that? Oh my god, it's so cool. The shockwave. And in this new area, there's also a new enemy. It's like tiger and lion bred together. or I don't know. <laughs> but anyways. Yes, we, we got those uh, tiger lion thingies. They drop raw game, which is pretty good because we need it for our constitution. It's not like we're running out, but it's always nice to have some stocks, right? stonks we're currently headed to the raven's keep where we have a quest from the hunter to get its tanning station and once we get that we can make leather and with leather we can make a backpack and a glider and also leather is needed to make our next armor set after getting this note in raven's keep i was shown lupa's lair so that was our next area of destination to get our new tanning station <laughs> for leather. So anyways, I farmed this place for a bit as there was a golden chest here which would contain level 16 weapons. So I said to myself, why not? Well, I didn't really farm that long. I was very happy with the Sword of Radiance. With its five, I mean four precise perks, which adds five percent critical chance, this sword would be amazing with our skill that gives us five percent maximum health every time we hit a critical. So this, I'm gonna call this sword my healing sword. I raided yet another VUCA camp while I was on my way to Lupa's lair. Cause why not, right? It's a good experience point. And we also get some uh, loots from them, like eggs and other stuff. But yeah, it's uh, just very satisfying to break their guard and deal like the shockwave skill. I like how it pushes it away, like boom, and then they just die afterwards. I also discovered this red mushroom. This mushroom drops adrenal glands and we need a lot of it like 20 or yeah I think 20 to strengthen the flame. So it's gonna take a while to actually find these because uh, these mushrooms are pretty rare. They basically spew out acid poison or something the damage is like 41 per ticks but no worries we have our healing. I mean our healing sword and our self healing. I was eventually met with a dead end as I had no way of going up but i wasn't going to stop here i'm gonna think of a way to actually go up and the only idea i had is to dig up and double jump to eventually reach the top i persisted a lot jumping from rocks to another rocks creating some platforms to my for myself to stand I, it, it was a race against the durability of my pickaxe if it would last longer but don't worry we got this see we're slowly going up there 
we almost fell but you know <laughs> it was a real struggle but with persistence eventually rewarded me with the reward i wanted to seek the top of this place let's go let me just put a flame out here so we don't you know get the yoinked off we were not supposed to be here yet the monsters here are level 20 but i really just wanted a tanning station so we can start crafting some leather for some bag glider and other stuff and since we have the flame altar we can just dis disassemble the gate and we can raid this place as fast as we can standing guard at the tanning station was a matron a scavenger matron but yeah i'm already used to its attack pattern it's not really a threat to me so i just bring up my shield whenever it like throws some acid all i need to pay attention to is its acid bite if it acid bites my face i'm one shot to death but yeah oh my god i fell <laughs> Okay, so we'll just casually take our time looting stuff here. And these things have leather in them. Okay, after climbing up again, I initiated the fight with a scavenger matron. Ouch. Every crit is a heal. This is crazy. This is way better than the water aqua. No, 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 no. Damn. He got us there. My shield broke the moment he hit like three of his shots. I killed him. Killed the Gorgon Matron. Got a Mystic Pants we don't need. And yeah, we got the tanning station. Time to make some leather. And to make leather, it needs 2 ammonia gland, 20 salt, and 10 dried fur. And the result would be 10 leather. And it takes about 15 minutes. <laughs> so we, got ha we have to wait until we can finally get our leather. So yeah, let's go do something else while waiting. Our next batch of flax is ready to be harvested. I really hate harvesting like this in this game. I wish there was a way, like a sickle, which you can just slash everything and you get everything. Like in most farming games, like Stardew Valley or something. But anyways, no complaining. Start planting. My next goal now was to find a smithing tool for the blacksmith. So he can finally make us some armor while our leather is still processing at the tanning station. So in this tower, there should be a clue to where the smithing tool is. And here we see a scavenger and a spider fighting to the death of each other. And we reach level 16. Neat. After getting the clue from the tower, I went to this Conway camp. Where there were a bunch of insects or also a note which would tell us where the smithing tool was. And as you can see, the quest indicator is already showing us where it is. So I just need to go there and grab it. And oh yeah, I got a uh, legendary shield for magic. This place was called the Jasper Isles and my only goal here was actually just to get this smithing tool but I believe there should be a shroud route here as well because it looks pretty shrouded but we almost died but we U-turned and we actually got the smithing tool. Let's go. I guess a strand of uh, luck we have here. And pretty lucky we encountered another of these red mushrooms because I really need a bunch more adrenal gland to strengthen my flame. So I will call this luck. But we got this. We almost died because we were too cocky of our regeneration abilities. And there's also another one here hiding behind this mushroom. We'll also need to chop these mushrooms or some mint mushroom meat, I believe is what it's called. So, yeah. We're strengthening the flame. Oh, we're sacrificing. It wasn't actually a shroud brute, but an elixir well that was nearby. Time to get that juicy skill point. This elixir well, there was actually a boss called the Fell Monstrosity. It was our first encounter with this boss, and it looked kind of like a bundled up together humans or something. I don't know. As you can see, there's a hand right there. 
And he has a huge mouth. He's spewing, he's spewing like blue things. But anyways, he's not really that much of a threat. It's not like his damage is as crazy as the scavenger matron. That would one shot us if it hits its acid bite. And also its poisons were actually really strong. But this one, he just shoots random comets from above. And sometimes he has this aim boulders on my face. It hurts, but not as much as the acid bite. It's not that much of a threat. We can just out heal him with our healing sword. Just keep critting and we get like 47 HP per slice. And yeah, as you can see, he's almost dead. Oh. I think I need the magic shield for this. Oh, not really. Look, I cannoned my face, I tanked it. And we defeated the fell monstrosity. Nice. What did you drop, buddy? Another mystic boots we don't need as a mage. So after defeating the fell monstrosity, I chopped down the shroud root. I then went home, crafted myself the mercy. We need linen. So let's go to our hand spindle and look at my linen. We have 186 linen from all the flax we've been farming. So now let's make the remainder of our mercenary set. The armor, the pants, and the boots. Oh, we're lacking bronze bars. Oh no, we gotta farm more. Back to this camp we go until we eventually had two extra bronze bars to make the full set. And look, I look like... A guy, full plated bronze armor guy. <laughs> Looks pretty nice. After a bunch of farming, I finally made myself the mercenary boots. And also, I had some extra for a pickaxe. I actually farmed for a few a few minutes or days there. Because like, you know, I wanted a pickaxe so bad so I can mine much faster with a bronze pickaxe. Well, let's go. Day 54, I wanted to get the farmer's request. The almanac of planting and seedlings. I I'm not sure how I pronounce or what the item name was actually called. But basically, I went to this Suvat's rest. I... Oh my god, I, I pushed that guy down. It's so scary swinging my sword here. I might fall. But anyways, we went to Suvat's rest to look for the almanac of planting and seedlings for the farmer and i wanted to test out the passive skill i got which basically reflects damage to the enemies if they hit us by 20 percent chance and it doesn't seem like it's working i should reset and get my skill points back because it's a waste of skill points so anyways let's go get the almanac so I went inside this scavenger arena. There should be a scavenger matron which has the almanac that the farmer wants. But I can't seem to locate it. Maybe it's hiding somewhere. Come here big fella. Are you here? Oh he is here. I don't want to fight him here. Because if he has and bites us here we're basically Oh my god we're, we're dying. We're frying. Oof. Oof. Okay bandage up. Bandage up. We'll wait for this guy to come here. Oh my god. Uh, let's regenerate our stamina real quick. You're dead. <laughs> Boom. Alright, we got the almanac. Also, didn't forget about the treasure the caravan left here. So it was a limestone block. Anyways, time to go home. And give the farmer her request. And since a second batch of leather was done, it was finally time to make ourselves a new glider. The Extraordinary Glider. Let's go. It's much faster and higher range than our previous glider. 
So yeah, it's already way better than this, of course. And then let's make the large backpack. The final upgrade to our backpack in this game. Look at all those inventory slots. Let's go. This day, I mined some clay since I needed like just five pieces to make the oven that the farmer can make for us. In the oven, we can make something like bread and that bread gives like plus four strength. So I'm aiming for that for more damage. Also had received one small, I mean, a one wheat seed i believe from a volca last time i was in the outside exploring so i made it into 20 seedlings just one grain can make you 20 seedlings of wheat these seedlings will be our future shrek food so yeah grow well my seeds and let's harvest more flax let's make more linen we can never have enough day 56 i wanted to get to that tower just straight ahead that's my goal for today i'm gonna go on there so we have a new teleportation point where we can just fly everywhere around this new area while heading towards the tower i reach a place called the rattle bleak there really isn't that much here, so I just pass on because I really want to tend to prioritize going to the tower first. And there's also a large fossilized bone here. This is where we can get fossilized bone and we needed 20 pieces of it in order to strengthen the flame. So after reaching the tower, I immediately tried to solve all the puzzles and all the things that needed us to test so we can reach the top. And after reaching the top, you know what I did? <laughs> Break more jars. Because these things, I swear, these are a shortcut to getting good items in this game. So now we can go to our main quest fairly easy with our new glider. We can just jump out and glide towards the area we need to go to. The rattle beak. We just went there, but we need to head there again because there's something we need to get there. Take a look how fast the Extraordinary Glider is and the distance it can cover. It's very far. We can actually reach a rattle beak without even landing once. So the search will commence once we land here. We'll probably be looking for a note or something hidden somewhere. And there it is. Locations below. Underground. Somewhere. After locating where that underground is, we got a note. Which we didn't read, but yeah, our quest updated and we need to go to the Cradle of Dusk. It's probably an area where we fight something. And after reaching the Cradle of Dusk, a fell monstrosity was waiting for us. Well, we already beat one fell monstrosity. What can another do? <laughs> You know, I can just tank this, actually. I think. I have self healing plus regeneration and a lot of health. Oh, wait, let's guard this though. It felt dangerous. Full health again. Oh my god, this is a tank. Yeah. Okay, so we got the black cauldron for the alchemist. Next, I went to clear a nearby elixir well, cause why not? And here's another problem of ours again. We need to fight these mages without any archery skills. But good thing we had good arrows. So we can just headshot these guys and we can, well, kill them. And I'm not excited to fight the flying mage boss i'm scared after diving head first towards the shroud root there was a brute waiting for me but well haha <laughs> yeah like i said brutes are no problem just, just just keep slashing them until they die <laughs> anyways that's that for the pr brute problem let's chop this wood now i mean root oh my god these plants are annoying Jeez. 
After going home, I made myself the alchemy station. Now we can... Well, I don't really use this actually. But we can make nitrite and antiseptic with this. And also another thing, I forgot. So yeah, I've been running out of stock of these mysterious flasks. Basically the thing I called elixir that gives 30% more damage. So I decided to farm them in Rookmore as they had the, like two pieces every time you respawn it. So I just kept farming here until I got like about 10 and that would be enough I think. Currently looking at my character stats, I have 1164 health. <laughs> That's a lot of health. I won't be dying anytime soon. But yeah, I'm gonna... I'm, I'm here at Lupa's land, Lupa's lair, whatever. I'm gonna do another optional quest. I think this quest was supposed to be done first. That's why I'm running in reverse. I'm running away from the lair. Because there's supposed to be a camp near this lair. Which would lead us to this Lupa's place. And as you can see, the scavenger here was level 20. And we were fighting level 15 and 16s earlier, right? So yeah, this place was actually... Should be cleared at around this time. Not earlier. I just... You know, I just mined the way up until we got to the lair. We were supposed to not be here yet. Anyways, side quest. Seems the optional quest was just a chest. And we got a level 20 uh, uh, epic one, which we don't need, sadly. I then decided to mine a bit of fossilized bone as we need like 20 of this to strengthen the flame. Because hey, why not? And after a bit of running, I can see the environment this as you can see this is the desert it looks like an actual desert now this will be the next area we can we need to go through this will be our episode four of our 100 days as a warrior in enshrouded as you can see the smoke here are deadly shrouds i tried fighting one of the beasts it's level 21 and i barely do any damage but maybe because its armor is made of hard scales, obviously, right? And he can't also hit me because he's pretty slow. But Scorpion, we're dealing pretty decent damage to the Scorpion. I also reached level 18. So yeah, I was just testing my strength. I added some skills because I'm pretty sure they wouldn't kill me with my 1k HP. So now we unlock a bunch of new stuff like the Deerstalker hood. I also wanted to see if we can hit the bird with a melee attack. So yeah, unlike the enshrouded mage, we can actually hit this with a melee weapon. It's just a bit of a hassle because we need to wait for it to be close to us. But anyways, there's no problem. At least we know we don't need to use a bow against this bird. We only need to use the bow against the undead mages. Alright, so uh, while I was exploring here, I found this farm area and it contained a lot of plants for the higher level plants like the saffron uh what was this other thing called again the grapple plant and more saffron so this place was actually lucky that we discovered this we don't need to farm saffron anymore and the grapple plant if we ever need it because we are already loaded I was currently kind of lost, but I was in an underground cave passage shroud place, someplace. But anyway, I decided to just chop some trees because I have nothing to do here. I mean, mushroom trees because I have nothing to do here. I was looking for some tin ores. It's the only thing remaining so I can strengthen the flame. So I'm kind of lost right now. But eventually, I went to this area called the Smothering Pit. And that's when I thought I was actually on the right track to maybe finding some tin. So, pretty sure uh, there should be tin here because there's like the mining icon. So, I just need to locate where it is, find out where it is. It's very hard to spot. It's like, it looks, it looks like a cookie dough. So I'm like trying to find the cookie dough somewhere here, but yeah, it's it's really hard. There's a bunch of monsters. They're great for experience, and I don't like these mage mages. I won't be able to hit them unless we use our arrows, and my damage is so sad. It's gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna tank the hits of these random monsters as I try to beat the heck out of this 
mage. But anyways, we can just regenerate our health by melee attacking these other monsters with our critical chances. Oh yeah, after trying to find Tin, I found the Shroud Root instead. And I bought this Brute right here with some of these... Uh, oh my god, they're Night Shrouded. Like, it's a Shroud, but in a Knight Armor. So it's gonna pose a challenge because there's also some archers and mages here. But don't worry, we have our bandage to heal us and we have our giant potion flask. And we can just focus dodging the shroud brute's attack and we should be fine. These archers don't really do anything aside from throwing the shroud bombs which like, you know, decrease the duration of the shroud. But we're already in front of the root so 5 minutes is enough time to actually beat everyone up and then chop this root. And like I said, everyone's already dead. And we got a new shield, a flame shield, but level 18. Our current flame shield is level 16, so this was an improvement. Well, anyways, I finally found the tin. Look, like I said, it looks like a cookie dough. Look, look at that texture right there. It's a cookie dough, right? <laughs> so anyways, after mining all these tin, I mined about 30 of them. So yeah, after mining the tin, I went home thinking I had enough, but I was actually missing some ammonia gland and spark. I started the day by harvesting my wheats and my flax. I needed the wheats in to, to make it into flour and make some bread, because bread gives like plus 4 strength. And there's also another recipe from the farmer which gives plus 4 strength and plus 2 constitution, which was really good. I then process all my flax into linen. As you can see, I have a bunch of them. Then planted some new seedlings of flax before I went out to my adventure. But well, first, we'll need to collect some sparks. So we can upgrade or strengthen the flame so we can visit the next area of interest. So this was a good place to actually grab a bunch of sparks. So yeah, I did this for a while. Do I have enough? As I was venturing the shroud to go to my quest, I saw this elixir well and decided, hey, I should raid this because why not, right? It's plus three skill points. Easy. Very confident with my armor and damage, I just jumped straight towards the well. The enemies are just level 21 shrouded. It's not really a problem. And as you can see, I can even thank this exploding bug, <laughs> but yeah, we, we should not get that over our head and actually try to defend ourselves from it because two bugs would spell trouble for me if I get hit by them. A good thing there's only... I, I only got hit once. I hate these knight enemies, but yeah, who's the better knight? Of course it's to me. <laughs> so this is a continuation of hit block, hit block until one of us surrenders, but of course. I have shockwave and he doesn't. I broke his armor and he's dead. For this archer, stop running. I hate this archer. But yeah, I, I totally forgot that the game has a feature called locking on enemies. <laughs> and that actually made my life easier in chasing down enemies and also fighting bosses. But yeah, there's also this knight again where we gotta fight. And yeah, their damage isn't that amazing so it's not really a problem. It's just annoying that they shield up, but it takes time to kill them. Anyways, let's shop the shrouded wood. And upon opening this golden chest, I got myself a legendary level 21 ice blade. We have a good upgrade on our weapon. So now we have a stronger weapon. We need to enhance this first though before we can use it. On the next day, I decided to chop some palm wood as these things drop yucca fruit. And we'll be needing 40 of these to level our flame to level 6. So yeah, that's what I've been doing for a bit. I also collected a bunch of saffron since we needed 40 of those as well. And while heading towards the direction of my quest, there was this random bird that tried to attack me. I wanted to see if I can actually hit it with my melee weapon and turns out I can but it's just a hassle because it keeps like moving away unless we have the high ground we can't do anything about this bird. So moving on, I found an ancient obelisk on the quest location I was doing and <laughs> the random bird was very rude and poked me from the back but anyways, yeah fall down, sit, sit boy. 
After interacting with the obelisk, I went to this town filled with scavengers and there's also a haunted sun temple. It had two chests on the rooftops of this house and they were both gold. So this was a good place to actually look for a good weapon this time. So I was like, hmm, alright, let's make an altar here. Well, anyways, I decided to raid the haunted sun temple first before doing the farming. Maybe we can get something good here. So yeah, this place was filled with both scavengers and the enshrouded monsters. Outside being the scavengers and inside being the enshrouded. It's a mix of both and I hate them both equally. So anyways, after dealing with a bunch of these enshrouded monsters and activating some doors, opening some lockpicks. Well, eventually started the fight with a fell sickle sight. So my mission is just to loot this and run away. Oh my god, a stupid armor. Oh wait, I can actually do this. Ouch. As long as... We dodge that skeleton attack. Oh my god. This is the only oh oh that hurts. That hurts. That actually hurts. Mind you, our bow is just level 23 unupgraded. <laughs> As you can see, we're doing our best. Why doesn't it hit? Let's see if melee actually doesn't work. Oh, it works! What? It's my misconception. Maybe because they're flying and I can't hit their hit back. Huh? Huh. LOL! You think you can... <laughs> Hide like that, dumb fool. I discovered this camp just nearby the city or the scavenger full city and decided to also mine some sulfur as I needed 40 pieces of sulfur to strengthen the flame. So yeah, that's what I did. I, I mined 48 pieces of sulfur. That's it. Bow. Thank you. Then went home and harvested all the flax that I have cultivated for the past few days there's like about a hundred of them here i think <laughs> farming let's go then mine some salt at the beginning area again as i needed this to make some bread make dried fur i mean leather and a, l a bunch of things because i already use up all my salt yeah so after doing my duties on my base like mining the salt i went and raided this place called the sapphire strand I was headed towards the the iron mine, which was close by, because the tower was just right ahead. The scavengers here were level 23, but they were no match against my newly acquired legendary sword, the legendary ice blade. And look at this guy, the guy we all hate, the green scavenger. He is no match at all to my scavenger. And we got a Nova right here. This will be a good addition to our arsenal. We'll be changing the Sword of Radiance to this Nova once I upgraded it. Yeah, I dived towards the Shrouded. This was very close to a deadly Shroud, but I know where I shouldn't go. So anyways, I was headed towards the Blacksmith Squats. Basically, the Hearts of Steel, I think, it, or the Hearts of Iron is what it's called. Basically, there's a shroud root here, and below the shroud root would be the iron vein. Yeah, I'll destroy the shroud root. There's also a fell sickle sight boss here, but hopefully we don't encounter it. I just want the iron so I can upgrade my armor and my tools. So that's the only goal I have here. Destroy the root, mine some iron. Yeah, since this was a point of interest, it is obviously guarded by some enshrouded. But the fell sickle site for some reason is a no-show here. I don't see it at all. I don't see it anywhere. And as you look, look at the Nova. The Nova looks really cool, right? 
<laughs> but the damage is well I'm against this knight, so the damage isn't really that great. But still, the Nova looks nice. Alright. Now let's shut up and mine. After chopping this, of course. I would need about 50 or more iron. Actually, more than 50. 40 for strengthening the flame and extra irons to make tools and our gears. Our endgame gear. After getting back home, I immediately went on smelting the iron. So okay, I, I can have some gear upgrades. And I was also looking for some coal because I'm too lazy to chop some wood. But if I really don't have wood and coal, I, I gotta go, man. So this is the new set I'm aiming for. It's called the Soldier Set. And look, it's mainly focus and one-handed melee and melee damage and critical strike, which is good. We're only missing the padding now. We have a good source of lapis near the camp or near the village that was full of scavenger with a haunted temple. So that was no problem. The only problem is the padding. We'll need to look for the hunter's tanning station so we can make some padding. This day, I went to the iron mines once again because I needed more irons to strengthen the flame. I, c I didn't have enough to actually make the equipment and the tools with having extra 40 pieces. So yeah, and on this round, we actually fought the sickle side boss because, well, he was there. It's the weakness. He looks like his fire type. I hate you already. Oh, okay, okay, you're on my level now. Alright, then now, huh? Oh, he teleported. Oh my god, that shroud that is so strong. Ha <laughs> ha He's dead. We got a wooden tooth we don't need. On day 88, I mined for some lapis. And as you can see, I've been using max performance the entire time because with max performance my frames was 165 hertz but the moment the moment i changed it to just performance i can now visually see how obvious the ores are these are the lapis lazuli and it looks so beautiful <laughs> i was always playing in max performance i never thought this game would look really nice but yeah my frames suffer and i have like around 90 frames if i do this so I need to convert back to max performance or my combat abilities will suffer. This day, I was on my quest to get to the Ancient Spire. I really wanted to have a fast travel point where I can just fly to objectives. So yeah, that's, this was the point of this journey and I actually got lost. So I was exploring the shroud. I, I mean, yeah, the shroud. I went inside this cave passage and I have no idea where I am anymore. I kept checking my map but I don't seem to find a way. I went down here so I would have a way to get to the other side where the tower is but for some reason there's just nothing here. But there is some uh, iron here which was nice to know but aside from that I couldn't find any stairs up. So I probably went to the wrong direction. And after backtracking my tracks, I eventually found a way up. And now all I had to do is just to go to the right side and I should be able to find the tower. I was pretty close by now. So just a few more laps to go and we should be at the ancient spire. And you know me, since I really can't find a stair up this mountain, I just made one myself because it's possible. That's how the game works. So I had, since I have some bombs on hand, it wasn't really that time consuming as I just threw bombs after bombs, jumping after jumping, and eventually reach a top where the ancient spire was. Let's go. I teleported myself in to do the trials of the tower. Also broke so a lot of jars because well, these things had are treasures. Look at all those fabrics on the floor. I'm so sad it's colored though because colored fabrics are... I don't know what's the use of them. Probably just furniture or decorations. But what we need is the normal fabric or the yellow fabrics for equipments. And yeah, this place was full of treasures like that. I'm, I'm happy. 
And after some plundering and puzzle solving and evasion, I mean evading the traps, <laughs> I finally reached the top of the tower. Now we can go and do our main quest, which we're nearby. We can just fly to it. I headed to this abandoned camp full of armadillo sharks. I don't know what to call them because like, you know, their head is like a shark, but their body's armadillo hard shell. But anyways, after interacting with all the letters in this camp, I started heading towards the East Lapis or what they call the heart something, the ocean heart. It should have the loom the hunter has. We really need an armor upgrade so we look cooler because this bronze armor is not growing on me. I wanna, I want my character to look like wielding some steel. But well, since an elixir well was closer, I just dove in <laughs> like a madman and started going through the route straight up. I don't care. Let's just go. I'm a tank. I'm a nuke. Boom. So let's start chopping this route and deal with anything that's here after they appear. But well, their route is already destroyed and they're just basically low level monsters. But since I noticed there's actually stone statues here, I, yeah, as I, I knew it, there was a fell monstrosity here. It was uh, another it was another boss battle here. Well, don't worry, let's just take care of the minions first before we actually fight with the boss. That should help our chances of winning, not like it was low. <laughs> Look at how tanky we are. Look at our battle here. Every time we crit, we heal. It's crazy. We just don't die. Maybe until they, until a monster bursts us or something, and that's when we die. I have like about 22 constitution and about 1.4k health. I'm not sure how my character would die at this point. I'm just so tanky and so strong. I invested all my points to strength and constitution and all the great passives a warrior can have. Ouch. What does this do? Increases my shroud time? Maybe level 25. But I'm stronger. Oh. I have full buff, buddy. Oh, I have 8 skill points. Look at my extra skill. I guess I leveled up. Oh. Okay, it's skewing. It's so easy to avoid that. Yeah. Oh, he fell, he fell, he fell, he fell. He's stuck there. <laughs> Ouch. Alright, let, let's end this. Too bad, buddy. I have 19 constitution. So I actually had 19 constitution. <laughs> I think that was late game. <laughs> I said I had 22. Next, I chop a bunch of palm wood again so I can get more yucca food. I really need more, like about 20 more, and I should be done. So next thing I did was I went to this uh, excavated damn camp something. <laughs> Anyways, this area, the extra forever camp something. And there were a bunch of birds here. There's also the alchemist tools here. So we need to get that from a bird's nest. Uh, for now, I'm, I'm just waiting for these birds to stop annoying me. Anyways, the items in this place, I mean, the breakable objects in this place and the salvageable objects, there's a chance that it will give some, what you call this, a padding. The, the padding is the one that we craft in order to make the high level, I mean, the end gears. So this place was actually a really good place to farm for those. If you can't wait on getting a tanning station and you just want to have try your luck on getting paddings. The rate is actually not bad. I get like a lot of fibers, a lot of potions, and a lot of other stuff here. So it's pretty good to just smash things here. In the hopes that we get the padding. But yeah, I think I'm just going to focus on the uh, tanning station. Because my armor right now isn't really that bad. But... At the same time, I really want to have an upgrade on my gears. So let's just get what we can get here and move on to getting the tanning station after retrieving the alchemist tools. 
And here we go. This is the alchemist tools we needed. The scientific instruments. Alright, let's... Uh, it's time to leave. We're done here. Seems like to make the laboratory, I would need some glass, some bronze bars, and an Athanor. And an Athanor needs some copper and bronze bars. Well, it's not really a problem since I had collected a bunch of ores and bars already. We were just now waiting for the smelting to be done. Next up, for the better food buff, I actually needed some grilled wolf meat. And I already deleted all my grilled wolf meat. I don't have any anymore, so it was time to farm some more of those. Yeah, I'm sorry, wolves. I'll, I'll need a lot of your meat. Anyways, after farming, it was finally time to raid East Lapis and look for the tanning station. So yeah, it was somewhere here in the city as the quest indicates. So we're just gonna kill everything here, get their experience points, and eventually find the loom. But of course, I will also try to kill the bosses here. These guys here are level 25. I was pretty confident with my regeneration, but never mind. As I kept trying and trying to bandage myself, for some reason it just doesn't work. So I ended up drinking a potion. It just doesn't work. <laughs> And maybe because I keep canceling the animation, I don't know, it just doesn't. So let's just try killing everything now. I don't care. I do care, but I don't know why it doesn't work. I'm bugged or something? But anyways, we took care of all the mobs that were chasing us and wanted to try again if it worked. And it suddenly worked. Pretty sure the game hates me. I reached the end of this area and there lied the Gorgor Gorgor <laughs> the matron the scavenger matron but let me just go max performance because honestly I swear to god my max frame rate when fighting monsters at the performance quality is 100 to 80 frame 80 to 100 frames and now I'm back to 165 look how smooth it is compared to earlier but the graphics earlier was truly magnificent and it looked beautiful but I'm gonna focus on combat, so no to the graphics, yes to the performance. And let's go, let's beat this boss. Let's whoop his behind. And my god, there's so many bugs. Ooh. Man, I feel that my weapon isn't strong enough right now. I mean, I can deal pretty decent damage to the minions. But right now, it's just not enough. <laughs> I need to have weapon upgrades now. Like maybe level 25 weapon soon. Then I don't want to keep whacking this thing until it dies. It'll take forever. Well, it's, we're close, we're close. I'm just paying attention to whether he will like acid bite. <laughs> he's dead. After killing the scavenger matron, the search continues for that tanning station. But well, after beating this guy, <laughs> I, I, I like swordsman, man. It's so good to just block everything and not being scared of being hit. After searching a lot high and low, I eventually found the basement which contained the tanning station. Let's go. Yeah. We can make some paddings. I mean, we make fabric with our linen in the tanning station. And with the linen, I mean with the fabric, we craft it to padding with the hunter. So let's go. You see the amount of linen I have? <laughs> That's why we farm so many flax at the beginning. You see that? We can fully get our full set of armor. We just need to wait for the fabric to finish making. And then, bam, new armor set. Honestly had nothing to do while waiting for the fabric to finish. So I decided to just chop some wood to make more charcoal as I needed more charcoal to do stuff, craft stuff for stations. So yeah, why not? Eventually got bored of waiting and farmed some sparks to strengthen the flame. After collecting all the materials, I strengthened the flame. It's now level 6. Fabrics weren't done yet, but I managed to craft some paddings. Now I can make some soldier set. 
Never mind. I need to get some, grab some charcoal. Then I can make the set. I already need the set. I already have five paddings. Oh my god, more waiting to do. So I decided to plant some of the wheat seedlings I have after making seedlings out of the wheat grain I gained somewhere. And now, the waiting game again. And finally, with some coal on hand, I made the helmet and... Oh no, I want the armor too so we don't look weird with only the helmet. And we crafted the armor. The other parts can wait for now. So helmet and armor is good enough. Look. <laughs> it, it's weird because it's just the helmet and armor. But it looks nice, right? It looks nice. Next day, I went on an elixir hunt. <laughs> I screwed up. I, I couldn't glide anywhere after bumping to a wall. I wasted a bunch of potion buffs. Now I have to repot, re-eat, and everything else. But anyways, I raided an elixir well. So time to chop the shroud root to de I can't hit for some reason. But anyways, this elixir well had a bunch of shroud in them. I didn't feel threatened at all with the, a new armor I have, with the amount of constitution I have. I fear nothing. And these guys are not even 25. They're just level 21. Haha, I'm spamming jump attack on their face just to destroy them all with my epic Nova. <laughs> yeah, they're all gone. They're all dead. Uh, yeah, warrior is fun. Just click, 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 and ignore enemies because you know you're very strong and very tanky. And it doesn't matter what they do, you just heal up. So fun. Got OP real quick. Since I wasn't really lucky in obtaining a shield of light, I just crafted myself one because why not? It looks nice. And also I, I had enough padding now to make a boots. The only thing left would be the gloves and the pants. Yeah, look at me. I have a good shield. I then went on and raided this sun temple right here. My goal right now was to finish all the middle, I mean the mid-high. How do we call this part of the game? So I guess the mid-high level or the the hard mode, not the post-hard mode. But anyways, I cleared the Sun Temple. I, I wanted to do all my optional quests, all my other quests, do all the temples, the Sun Temples, the Elixir Wells, before actually proceeding to the end game content of this game. Well, I surprised a bunch of scavengers here by my double jumping acrobatic skills. I killed a bunch of them, I grabbed some treasures, I clicked some buttons, and eventually I found the treasure area. And drumroll please, we got a Gloom Monarch Gloves which we won't be using at all. Next, I went to this camp which had a note telling me to go to somewhere else again as a clue for the shaman. I have no idea where but it's probably this oasis right here so yeah let's go there. And upon going to this optional a quest called oasis I was then led to another area that's called oasis once more so let's go there again. And after arriving at this camp area once more a letter telling us the, the true location which was just below me. And after going down, and it was actually a death oasis, you know, the moment you step down there, you're dead. But there was a treasure inside, and I get a gleaming staff we don't need at all. Yeah, that was worth the effort, right? Looks okay. I went home, planted my flax. It's not like I need them anymore, but I'm, I wasn't too sure. So I was just gonna plant them anyways, why not? So yeah. After doing a lot of miscellaneous chores in the farm and AFK for a bit, I finally had enough to make our full set of soldier set. And look at us now. Look. Doesn't that look cool? Check it out. Yeah. This day, I decided to go to the Sun Temple which contained the legendary glider. I raided this area full of level 30 scavengers but we worry not we have our new legendary armor we should be tanky enough to you know survive this predicament but the problem is our weapon is not on par with our armor 
we needed a much stronger upgrade to our weapon soon because we're not doing that much damage against this level 30 monsters it's gonna be a problem later we really need an upgrade so for now let's just deal with <laughs> these guys without upgrade on our weapon we're, we're still dealing decent damage but it would be amazing if we had a level 25 weapon instead but we got this yeah after dealing with all the mob characters, I went and searched for the boss. And here it is. he is. I saw him. I immediately went on a slashing spree. Making sure I was careful regarding his acid bite. Because that thing is our one-way ticket to heaven. Alright, now we're doing pretty decent with our slashes. Look like you. Oh my god. Woohoo. Wait, what? He did not even acid bite, but he dealt so much damage on me. I need a better sword. Man, my, my fire sword can't do damage at all. Alright, so where's the Gorgor Matron? Getting, getting, <laughs> getting destroyed inside here. Okay, the durability on our weapon is going down, down, down. Was that acid bite? It was acid bite. Where is it? Oh, this is not good. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Oh my god. Deal with this guy's first. Let's see, one down. What does he have? Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Oof. He almost got me there. <laughs> we dodged that. This guy spits acid while the other guy does nothing like that. Ouch. Oh lord. Okay, he's dead. Nice. Wow. Anyways, after that boss fight, I immediately went inside the sun temple after unlocking the gate. And on this chest, we got a Eagle Eye Glove. This was the endgame archer armor. And we got the glove part. That's pretty neat. But it's not like we use it, so I'm just probably gonna delete it. Anyways. <laughs> so after climbing up the tower and some other thingies, avoiding some birds because they're annoying to deal with since I'm melee, I eventually reached the top and we got the legendary ghost glider. Look at that speed. Look how good and fast it is. Dang. Since I needed a much better upgrade on my sword and armor, I guess, I went on a journey to locate a treasure chest, which contained a lot of riches. Enter this cave passage, since this was a mysterious thing that you don't really expect on a mountain. So you can expect that there will be some treasures above here. Upon reaching the top and gliding down, I found this tomb. It was a tomb full of the undead and they're level 30. But don't worry, we have our epic fire sword. It should be enough to deal with them. But man, my damage output is really bad. <laughs> I, I remember dealing 
only three strikes on these guys when they were lower leveled of course but yeah eventually we'll upgrade our gears and at the end of this journey we got a rare blazing one which we don't need horrible i swear horrible horrible yeah finally i reached the area i wanted to get to and there was this chest right here and the chest here it gives level 25 armors and level 25 gears epic and above so yeah after a few days of farming this place i got the entire set of paladin armor all right so this is basically what it looks like to have the full have the full paladin set looks cool right <laughs> so that's that's just it it just looks cool because if you can see here if you click on the helmet see this 15 percent critical chance it's great right and the armor is 42 and 28 pretty great right but if you compare it with this it has 15 percent critical chance but with a 12 percent critical damage chance you can already tell which is better but the paladin helmet just looks good <laughs> so sad but anyways it looks nice but still if you look at the pants as well they're the same except for the defense no 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 it's the gloves the pale paladin gloves only does two percent damage against melee foes while the soldier gloves gives 12 percent 100 melee damage and three percent against melee foes so you can already tell which is better, right? So yeah, for this paladin set, I'm only keeping, I'm only keeping all of the other parts except for the gloves and helmet. I'm gonna be using this. <laughs> Looks weird, but what can we do? This helmet is way better. Like any other good farmer, I grabbed all my wheat so we could process them to flour on this day. Afterwards, I then raided this elixir well, which had level 30 monsters, but we fear nothing as we have the paladin armor, boots, and the pants with our level 25 swords as well. I also gained a level here. Look, I'm level 24 now. So we have... We're still missing one more point to get the blood rage. But anyways, we'll get that point after conquering this elixir well. Starting off hard as these... The shrouded are very tanky with two of the exploding bugs i was overconfident i wouldn't die but i didn't die right as you can see but anyways i might have died if like you know i got hit by that swordsman shroud and then exploded anyways it seems a fell sickle site was laying wait in this elixir well i really hate these monsters i still have my level 23 bow i totally forgot to save a bow i like looted from the chest I, I i didn't think about it i just focus on the swordsman swords and stuff but anyways as long as it goes ground i mean close to our swords reach i should be able to kill this fairly fast so basically the moment it teleport it should land on ground level so yeah like i said we're destroying it his sight can't hit us as for the skull we can just dodge it like that <laughs> It's so dumby. It can't hit us the side. Anyways, so much for the level 30 sickle side. And we got another paladin boots. We already have one though. Time to chop this a shroud root and get the blood rage. Next, I went to this sun temple that was nearby the farming spot. So why not? Let's go. Let's finish this place. There was about four temple here. One which required three buttons to be pushed. So currently we're entering the first one and in this first one we have to fight a bunch of undeads just lurking around and then afterwards shoot through some holes in order to activate some buttons to open the next door. Pretty simple enough right and the enemies aren't really that hard. We're just destroying everything. Look at our glowing red hands. That's the blood rage. So yeah, after activating all these things, I push the button to the ne to open, I mean to unlock the door, the main door of the center temple. Next one. Just jump like this. <laughs> no, let's actually do this properly. So for this other one, 
the proper way would this would this would be coming here. And then let me bandage up real quick. Just jump here, jump here, cross the ladder here. This is the proper way, okay? So you go up here. You go up here. You regenerate a bit of stamina first. Or you can just glide straight. But I don't know why the game designed it like this. So swing. Swing. And I guess this is where you glide then? Because there's no more hope there. Alright. Wing. Follow the light. On top. And there you go. Finish the puzzle of the Sun Temple. After solving all the puzzle and opening the main gate, let's see what reward we get. And another trash magic weapon. I'm a warrior. Anyways, let's get the, the flame altar on top and read the, one of the notes here and loot the, one of the bodies. So we got some desert temple block. Would be great for building. And also, yeah, we got some spark. So just one area left. It's called the greatest game. Let's go to deep cut and see what awaits us. It seems to be a scavenger camp, but... Looking here, it feels pretty empty. There's not much enemies to kill. There's just a bunch of like, I don't know. There's some, there's some monsters. You can, you can just count them. Unlike the other bases where we raided, there were like so many of them. But anyways, I fought the boss here. But let's deal with the minions first. There's so many of them, but worry not. We have our regeneration at work. We can just block some attacks, hit some attacks, and regenerate through our critical strikes. Alright, so after- Oh my god, an acid bite, we dodged that. So anyways, yeah. I, you can easily beat the Gorg- I mean the scavenger- Gorgon- I mean the big scavenger. Just by locking into it and dodging whenever it attacks. But sometimes the- The poison is actually homing. But anyways, I recently discovered you can lock on enemies even if the game told you to. Even if the game taught me about this mechanic from level 1, I just never use it that much. I wanted to hack and slash. I then went to these uh, VUCA sacrifice hill in order to get the beehive smoker from this brawler we need to defeat. Well, this wasn't as tough as the deep cut earlier since the VUCA here is only level 25 compared to the monster we fought earlier at deep cut which was level 30. So we're doing pretty fine here. We just need to defeat this. Ouch. I'm so tanky and I heal <laughs> fast. And these guys are they just slash slash slash. Sargeman gameplay is so fun. So yeah, I crafted the laboratory. So finally, yeah, we completed everything we needed to do in Enshrouded. I have cleared up all the areas in the map that mark question mark. I have cleared up most of the elixir wells and shroud roots because I can't find anything else aside from what's on my map. So yeah, thank you guys for watching our 100 day. I played 100 days of enshrouded as a warrior. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you want more content like this in the future or just want to watch me play other games as well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So yeah, thank you. Bye now. Subscribe. Yeah.